Hey friends, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel and Firefly guitars have been a bit controversial lately because of their Eddie Van Halen inspired Super Strat type guitars. And I'll be doing another video about that coming up in the not too distant future, but at least for the meantime, uh, Firefly seems to be returning to what got a lot of people interested in them in the first place. That being traditional guitars, well made, but at extremely good price. And at least with this model right here, they're selling them again on Amazon.com, which I think is how a lot of people bought their first Firefly. Now these days, most of the Firefly guitars are sold through the official Firefly website, which is guitarsgarden.com. And that's been set up that way for a few years. But here and there, there are still some Firefly guitars that are sold on Amazon. And if you remember, way back in the day, that was really the only place you could buy them. And this guitar here, kind of a double cut, uh, not quite SG inspired guitar, uh, this is one of the new ones. And it's got like the rounded ball and frets and all of those cool modern features. But these are uh, for sale now on Amazon, uh, less than $200, $189. And the cool thing about Amazon, right, is you get the free shipping, you get the easy returns, all that stuff. So what is this guitar exactly? Well, this is the Firefly FFLG in gloss yellow. I like to think of this as taxi cab yellow, although nobody really understands that reference anymore. But you can get it in this color, and they also have the classic transparent wine red. And then they also have like a kind of an olive drab green, which looks pretty cool. Spec-wise, it's a mahogany body, mahogany neck. It's a set neck. Look at this neck joint right there. I'll give you guys a close-up of that, but super, super smooth neck joint. And then also the strap button is located on the back of the neck joint there rather than on the horn. It's got a rosewood fretboard, 22 of the rounded ball end stainless steel frets that so many people like. Nice big block inlays. Pair of humbuckers, three-way toggle switch, dual volume, dual tone controls. And if you look at the, uh, the body shape of this one here, obviously it's not exactly an SG body shape. And I think this might be even a little bit different than the, the previous Firefly guitars that were in this style because the lower, the lower body here, the lower, the lower bout of the body comes out even more. So this is a lot more along the lines of like an ESP Viper. You know, it's funny, I'm actually getting a pretty good collection of yellow guitars now. I've got this Firefly one, then I've got the SBS Showroom Series, and then of course I've got my old reliable Fender HM Strat. Yellow, it's, it's a nice spring color. Now, the frets on here, like I said, they're the stainless steel rounded ball end frets. These are the same frets that come on other Firefly guitars with this fret style. And the thing about these frets is they're not super big frets. These are not like the extra jumbo stainless steel frets that you would find on a Schecter or a Jackson or even some of the Harley Benton guitars, but uh, they do have the beautiful rounded ball end. They do the little trick where the frets are a little shorter than the fretboard, so you, you end up not having any issues where the wood of the neck like expands or contracts and then the frets stick out, right? You don't have to worry about that with these because they've kind of built in a little bit of uh, wiggle room, if you will. And the other thing is the sound of these frets. And this is not just this guitar, but it's stainless steel frets in general. They have a particular uh, sound when you hear the string vibrating on the fret. And you can really hear it like on a hammer-on where the string is vibrating and then you press it down onto the fret. Uh, stainless steel frets have this sort of like tink tink kind of plink kind of sound to them. It's a little bit more of an attack right when the string hits the fret. It's a little bit hard to describe and I honestly don't know how much it comes through an amplifier but when you're sitting you know playing with the guitar acoustically an electric guitar acoustically you can hear the difference most of the time between stainless steel frets and traditional nickel steel frets. Now, having a very low action, I think kind of exaggerates that sound a little bit. And this guitar has very low action. It was actually too low when I got it. I'll tell you more about that after we do the demo. But yeah, 
I wouldn't be surprised that in five or ten years from now, basically every guitar, new guitar made, will come with stainless steel frets. More and more guitars are featuring stainless steel frets. I think some companies are just about doing exclusively stainless steel frets and everybody seems to love it. Okay, anyway, I'm talking about the tone and listening to the sound of these frets and everything. Let's go ahead and plug the guitar in and listen to how it sounds. Now, of course, guys, real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, this is a classic Guitar Max video, checking out cool new affordable guitars. And uh, if for some reason you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, let's plug this in. I'm gonna use my Boss IR200 amp and cabinet simulator. That's about a $400 piece of equipment. I always like to mention that so you guys don't think I'm using like thousands of dollars worth of recording equipment to make the guitar sound better than it actually is. There's no studio trickery going on here. All right, anyway, let's plug this in and listen to how it sounds. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about the sound and playability and a few other things with this guitar. So first of all, uh, something that, you know, a few things that kind of jumped out to me when I was playing the guitar. Uh, these tuners are really good. These are not name brand tuners, generic stuff that Firefly is coming up with, but they're really, really smooth. It always impresses me when an affordable guitar, you know, we're talking sub 300, some uh, sub $200 guitar has nice smooth tuners without a bunch of play in them or anything like that. So uh, three cheers for good quality affordable tuners. Now the other stuff is that of course we love these frets, right? I talked about the frets earlier in the video, but I'll just mention it again here after playing these. You know, the stainless steel frets, they're polished so nicely, so smooth. Again, these are not big frets and normally I, I like big, tall, extra jumbo frets. Um, but the thing is with these, they're finished so nicely, no high frets, uh, you know, no rough spots on the frets, flat spots even from bad crowning. None of that stuff uh, is on here. So even though these are, you know, kind of medium-ish frets, um, the, it, the guitar is still very responsive. It's still, it's still very easy to play because the frets are done so nicely. With these rounded ball end stainless steel frets, right, that are on the Firefly guitars and like Eart and, you know, other companies like that, 
Uh, I think 90 something percent of the time they're all working with the same fret stock, like the same fret wire material to begin with. Uh, and then they're just, you know, they get the bulk fret wire, they cut it down to make the frets and everything. And I, I suspect they do the fret ends before they put them on the guitar. That way you can have these beautiful ball ends and they're a little shorter, but there's no fret marks, you know, no fret working marks on the fretboards ever. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here. I think sooner or later, these companies are going to be hearing the demand for bigger frets and they're going to be able to use the exact same process with the frets, but just start with a large, you know, a larger fret wire like bulk material to begin with. Maybe that'll happen in the future. It wouldn't surprise me, you know, a year or two from now, we see, we see a lot of that. Okay, while I'm talking about the playability, I should mention a couple of things. The guitar was playable out of the box, but I did make two minor setup adjustments. I adjusted the, you know, the neck relief, the truss rod, maybe a third of a turn, a little more relief. It's getting a little bit of choking uh, in the middle uh, section of the fretboard. And then I slightly raised the action. <laughs> Believe it or not, the action was too low when I got this guitar out of the box. So yeah, a couple of minor adjustments took me all of five minutes to, uh, to get it dialed in. And this thing just, you know, plays absolutely fantastic. All right, so there's a few other things I want to talk about here. The weight of this guitar, I weighed this exact guitar and it was 7.3 pounds. So nothing really to write home about, pretty standard weight for a guitar like this. Now the other thing is the balance of this guitar, like with a strap. How does this balance? Because sometimes SG-ish body styles with a short horn, sometimes these guitars don't balance very well. So I'm going to get a strap, we're going to put it on here, I'm going to stand up and we're going to check out how it balances. Okay guys, so here we go, got the strap and let's see how this thing, how this thing balances here. So playing. So you're playing your bright yellow ACDC riffs and so if I'm just kind of standing naturally that's about where it lays and if I tilt it up yeah the neck comes down a little bit how about down here yeah it comes up a little bit so I would say the balance is not quite as good as a like a Strat type guitar or any guitar where you have a longer horn up here to move the strap location further out. But that being said, for a guitar of this style, it balances pretty well. And it's not, you know, it's not sinking down or anything like that. It pretty much stays where I put it. But at the same time, it's not, it's not doing anything to lift itself up like some of the really well-balanced guitars, you know, like a Jackson Warrior or something like that. It always keeps the neck up really high. So if I had to, you know, give this like a 1 out of 10 for balance, I'm going to give it like a 7.5. Okay, and uh, something else here I want to mention about the, uh, about the strap. Sometimes I, I talk a lot about balance and people write stuff in the comments and be like, oh, well, you just got to use a bigger strap, you know, use a strap that's thick and really sticks to you. Well, that doesn't help the balance of the guitar. All it does is it just keeps the strap from dragging uh, on you as, as much as like a smaller, slicker strap. But it, it doesn't help the balance at all, and the weight is still pulling you, uh, probably in a way you don't want to go. So I'm, I'm really not a big fan of that. So the balance of this guitar is, is pretty good as it is. It's totally usable. But if you have a guitar where the balance is just terrible and it's got a really bad neck dive, like, I mean, I hate to use a specific example like this, but a BC Rich Ironbird, they look incredibly cool. They have, they have horrendous neck dive. If you have a guitar like that where the neck dive is really, really bad, I think you should just, you know, take a whole different approach, which is e either moving the strap buttons to a different location on the guitar, or in some cases you can add like a counterweight. Some, sometimes people put weight in the control cavity, like fishing weights or something, to add more weight on one side to balance the guitar out. I had a Schecter V guitar. Uh, that was like that. It had, on its own, it, it just had a really bad ne neck dive, and it was a guitar that I used, like, live. Uh, so I ended up hanging a chain off of one end, and A, it looked cool, and B, it made the guitar balance perfectly. All right, guys, so that is the FFLG from Firefly. Again, less than 200 bucks. 
for this guitar. You can get them on Amazon as usual. I'll have links for this guitar plus everything else I was talking about down in the video description below. And yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this. Do you like stainless steel frets? As in, do you prefer them to good old-fashioned nickel steel frets? Or what do you think? How do you feel about that? Thanks a ton for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you soon.